Welcome everyone. Today I want to take a quick look at something exciting. You may have heard about WebAssembly and Python in the browser, but until now you likely didn't have a good way to try it out. Well, that has recently changed with the site in front of us today. This is PyScript.com, a free service like CodePen to play around with Python in the browser. This is a project under the Anaconda organization. They're involved in a number of interesting things, including my favorite REPL alternative, IPython. If you used Jupyter Notebooks or Jupyter Lab, same people. So let's get into the site and see what it's all about. All right, so this is the main interface of the site, which is called your dashboard. When you have projects in here, they'd be listed out. I don't have anything on there currently, but we're gonna change that today. So let's just jump right into it. We'll create a new project. It's gonna give you a randomly generated name and we're gonna change that to say your info. Now we have three main files here. We have our index.html, which is pretty bare bones. We'll again change the title but leave pretty much everything else exactly the same. Now there's a couple of interesting things here. In the script section, we see that we have our script source set to pyscript.net, and it also has a dated release. We also have a couple of other files here that are referenced. We have the pyscript.toml, which is also on the left, as well as our main.py file. Now today, I don't think we're going to touch too much into pyscript.toml, but it's a good way to set some config information, including package dependencies that you need for your project. But we'll save index.html and close that back out. And today we're mostly going to be focusing on this main.py. So on this, you can see that it's just Python. It's a simple print statement that says hello world. And if we look on the right, we see that text printed out. As I would expect from the Anaconda team, the editor they have here is pretty nice. And one thing I like is how quick it is to go from change that you've made. We'll change hello world to Python in the browser. We'll also increase the font size quite a bit to make it more readable. So we'll save it, didn't take long, and then we'll run it. So it's going to compile everything, and here we go we see the updated version on the right side, Python in the browser. Now, while it took a lot of people a lot of time just to get us to this place, this by itself wouldn't be very impressive. But one really important thing that I like about this implementation of PyScript is your ability to interact with functionality you'd have available from JavaScript. For example, if we want to interact with the DOM, we simply just say from JS import document. And with that, we can interact with the DOM. And that means we should be able to impact effectively all parts of the DOM. So let's try writing a little demo, touching a little bit in the JavaScript world, but only writing Python. So we'll start out by setting the title of the page, saying that we're gonna be starting. Next, what I wanna do is prove that we have access to the document by pulling out some client information. I'm gonna do that by pulling out some cookies. So I'm gonna need a couple more things to get this accomplished. First, since I'm going to be printing out the cookie information, I want to make it human readable. So we can decode that cookie string directly from the document using Python's URL lib. That's a direct marriage between JavaScript and Python on a single line of code. Next, I'm just going to breeze through some code to parse the cookies out. All right, so at this point, we're processing all of the cookies, if they're available, and putting them into a cookie jar dictionary. That's gonna allow us to print them out in a significantly better format. And for the final touch, we're gonna go ahead and set the document title again, this time to say that we're finished. All right, and we'll save it and run it. And would you look at that? We have a beautiful Python traceback in our browser, letting us know that I have a comma instead of a colon for our dictionary comprehension. Beautiful, so this is further proof that we have actual Python running in the browser. So we'll save it again and run it. And there we go. We have Python 
pulling cookie information from JavaScript's DOM, processing it all in Python, and printing it out. Of course, I'm going to censor the information on here because it does have things like session IDs, user IDs, etc. And that's really not something that I should be showing. But also shows you just how minimal the cookies this site will collect can be. Granted, I did restrict it to only the functional cookies, so the cookies you see may differ. Now, not only is the document available, from JavaScript. But theoretically, most, if not all, of the major JavaScript objects should be available. Now, it's been a long time since I've worked directly with JavaScript, but I do remember there being some interesting information you can get from the navigator as well. So let's also import that from JavaScript. And with that navigator, we'll tell the user that we're going to get their browser information. So we'll print out the user agent platform and then we'll also do the plugins and the way that we're going to print out the plugins is with a little bit more python magic using join and we're going to join on a generator comprehension okay and that's what our full script looks like we'll save it and we'll run it on the right side, you see our cookie information. We see that we're getting the browser information. You can see my user agent. My platform, of course, is Linux. It looks like the plugins it sees are all related to PDF viewers. Interesting. Now, it doesn't just stop there. Not only can you view the page in an editor like this, but you can also get the hosted site version of it as well. So this is a version you can actually share with other people. And one interesting thing about this is on the shareable version, since they don't need to collect cookies, they're not actually going to collect cookies from you. But everything else is the same in here. And on the bottom right, we can see that it's made on PyScript, of course, and it links you directly to the code. So if someone shares their PyScript link with you for a demo app that they have, you can go directly to the source. And that's one thing I really love about PyScript. As a big fan of open source, PyScript has that same mentality, meaning that not only do you have the ability to develop PyScript through what you see here, if we go back to our dashboard, you can also see some trending and some featured projects that are available. So you can see what other people are doing. For example, if we go to using SQLite in PyScript, we can view their application, so this is their shareable version and see the output. And we can also view the code for their application. So in here we can see exactly what they're doing. This way you can get an idea of what other people are doing with it and how you can incorporate different functionality into your own projects. Now, as you go through these, you can get a bit more information about how to put even more complex applications together. For example, this simple panel application uses a number of third-party dependencies like NumPy and Pandas, which if we look at their PyScript.toml file, we can see that that's how they're specifying their additional packages. In that list, we see hvplot, numpy, and pandas. Now, of course, including a number of third-party packages increases the amount of time it takes to build everything. But concerning all this is running in your browser, that's a pretty good trade-off. So with that, we'll leave it here today. I'm sure PyScript is something that we're going to touch on a number of times in the future. There's really a lot of promise with Python in the browser. And I really want to thank the people that put so much time into making this happen. So this is where I leave you. Go ahead and create a free account, and if you come up with a really neat demo, send a link to it in the comments for the rest of us to check out. I'd be really interested in seeing what you all come up with. But until then, thanks for watching.